did my thesis with uh, Jacques Fremont in uh, Geneva, the Graduate Institute, and uh, was teaching in Lausanne, high school, several subjects, including being a ski instructor, so that was a fun part. And um, he called me up once and said, oh, negotiation training, are you interested? And my first reaction was like, negotiation, what? And so this was back in 1986. A friend of mine recently did some research and just came up with 175 definitions of negotiation. So the good news is that there's no universal definition. The bad news is that people involved in a so-called negotiation might have a completely different idea of what is, what is it that they're actually doing. Uh, clearly for some people negotiation is war by other means. Right? For others, it's problem solving, or is it relationship building, or, 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 or. And it's a little bit of all of that. That's what I find fascinating about negotiation. There are so many variables, and in any given contextualized situation, all of those variables have different coefficients. You always come up with a different equation. I've met all sorts of different people. Right? I've met people who are very good at doing deals, and I've met people who are really very, very loyal uh, to, for example, international humanitarian law. So there's a notion of negotiability, right? Then there's the spectrum in between. You have people on the ground who are actually one person shows, all right? They have great power, they can do things, they, you know, sort of, they, they can make things happen. Somebody else has always got to check with the back office. Can we do this? Can we do that? You know, please send me confirmation. There's no one answer. There's no right answer. See, that's the other thing about negotiation. You can do everything right, but it doesn't work. So who do you blame? You don't blame anybody, you know? That's the, that's the nature of the beast. Perfection doesn't exist. And that's also part of the humanity of it all. You know, we all make mistakes, including the other sides. Be kind to yourself, all right? Give yourself a break. Uh, be, yes, be kind to yourself, and we definitely hope that your, your self-confidence level, whether you're highly experienced or you're a relative newcomer, uh, you feel better about what you do and how you do it. Okay, it was the very early 90s. I was uh, part of a UN mission to, to Myanmar in Yangon. And this was a period where, you know, it was sort of hot and cold without going into more detail. So we were during a, let's call it a lukewarm period where, you know, the international community could come in. And I had a room, for, I, in fact, I had about 100 generals. And I have to say that I was not comfortable at all. I just realized this is going absolutely nowhere. Right, they, they, they were told to be there, they were there. But the, the, the amazing thing was actually during the coffee break. We have coffee together, and inevitably you talk about family, you talk about kids. And when you talk about kids, you talk about the future of kids, education, health, surprise, surprise. And suddenly, the walls came down, and we were just a bunch of people who had one thing in common. We had children, and we were concerned about their future. You know, at the end of the day, these are people. And uh, it's, you know, if you want something from somebody, it's for you to get to them. When you're humanitarian, it's lonely out there, all right? You're very, you're very much alone. And if you're fearful, there are very few places in the world where you can actually be open about your fears, where you can be open about, oh, I think I could have done it better. Because here in Co. With CCHN, you will never be judged. You will find support, you will find respect, and you will find empathy with colleagues who've been there as well. And that is the real community. If that can be maintained, that is worth much more than gold. <laughs>